je vais, je vais aller le récupérer. Bye guys. Das ist es, was wir als ouais, Distributeur en fait, schon seit scène. mehreren Jahren machen. Ja, Und Sie kennen auch hier das Ambiente <lacht> schon, dass wir hier dieses Mal auf der Cydia unterwegs sind. Vielleicht erinnert sich noch, wir waren gefühlt erst gestern auf der Eis in Barcelona und haben uns dort den Messestand angeschaut. Und jetzt gucken wir mal, was es Neues gibt. Und wir fangen mal damit an. Wo wir auf der Eis in Barcelona waren, erinnern Sie sich? Wir haben diesen hier vorgestellt. Das war da die große Messeneuheit. Beziehungsweise streng genommen war es jetzt nicht die große Messeneuheit. Der wurde vorher schon vorgestellt, aber er war kurz vor der Veröffentlichung. Der MK3 Prozessor. Den finden Sie bei uns an diesem Wochenende als richtig großes Video, wo wir über viele Funktionen reden. Und obwohl der wirklich jung ist, der ist jetzt effektiv seit circa einem halben Jahr auf dem Markt, hat er sich zum einen bei vielen Kunden schon etabliert, sowohl bei uns als auch generell im Markt. Er wurde hier als Finalist der Cedia Awards erkoren und auch entsprechend ausgezeichnet. Ich bin sonst niemand, der sowas abfeiert, aber letztendlich stand das Ding hier sowieso rum. Ich habe es hier nur kurz versteckt. Wichtiger ist, dass Ihnen das Produkt gefällt. Den kann man hier customizen, das heißt modular aufbauen für Ihre Bedürfnisse. Und für diejenigen, die ein Basic-Gerät brauchen, gibt es ja die Core 16. Die steht da hinten, aber die wollen wir uns heute jetzt nicht groß anschauen. Die haben wir ja auch schon im Video behandelt. Wir nehmen die Möglichkeit und wir wechseln jetzt ins Englische und treffen wieder den Sebastian. Vielleicht kennen Sie den noch vom letzten guys. Storm Audio Messe Video. Hi Sebastian, nice Hi, to das. meet you again. Nice to meet you again. How are you doing? Ah, I'm doing totally fine. How are you? I'm perfectly okay. It's a good day. Perfect. So you brought two new products to this exhibition yes. and you already announced it. We read the press release. It's yes. about first one, the new AV receiver. So let's get over to the front. So. I know that the back is even more interesting. Oh, yeah. Um, first of all, um, well, give us a short explanation of this product, please. Well, so this is the ISF Fusion 20. Uh, back a few years ago, we already had a receiver. Yes. We had to stop. Some customers were not really happy to do that. But we decided that we have to go back because this is really an interesting piece of product. And the old receiver Fully actually had a very interesting name. It was called I ISP 16.12 3D Elite. Was that right or? That's correct. Yeah. Co quite Th this one has quite a shorter name. It is called the ISO Fusion 20. It is actually a 20 channel processor together with 16 channel of amplification. Is there a receiver built in? It is a receiver in a sense, you mean a tuner radio? Yeah. No. Okay, so. It okay. is, we call it receiver okay. because that's the category. Uh, okay, so it's kind of an We get an idea what this one is about. Yeah. Okay. But the thing is that in a four rack unit, you have really the, the um, consolidation of a 20 channel processor and 16 channel configurations, which is very efficient. So if you have a, an installation where the space in the technical room is not big, you can have everything in one box. So let's wrap it up. This is the all-in-one solution from Storm Audio. Exactly. What was the reason for not having this kind of product in the past years? Well, you know, at, at Storm Audio, I mean, the, the company being Immersive Audio Technologies, actually, we, we do not only Storm Audio, but we also work for other, other brands. Um, you will see in the show floor, for example, Focal, they have a product called Astral 16. And actually, the Astral 16 is a version that we made for Focal based on the IISP that you mentioned okay. earlier. And at that time, we gave an exclusivity on using this amplifier, I mean, this product for them. Um, we decided that this is now that time to go back into uh, doing an integrated product, uh, especially because this is really where we are extremely efficient, uh, mm -hmm. both in terms of processing and in power uh, integration. So compared to the IISP, uh, now you can really go into a, a bigger installation. Let's head over to the back where I, I think this is quite this, good, this visible. This is quite clarified in the back panel indeed. So as you can see on, on, on the top part, you will recognize the Storm Audio, let's say, uh, typical back panel where you have the HDMI. We keep our seven input to outputs. With the ISR Fusion, Th This one is still HDMI, 18 gigabit based well, to the zero. The plan with the ISR Fusion introduction early 2023 is to have the HDMI 2.1 board. Was so 40 gigabit on all? 40, yes, on all on, inputs, on all inputs all okay. outputs. So this is what we have in mind for the launch. So this will be HDMI 
Um, this unit has four XLR outputs and we have the 16 channel of amplification. And just for comparison, as the name implies, the predecessor IISP 16.12 had 16 decoding channels and also four XLR outputs that are free assignable and only had 12 amplification channels. Yeah. So yes. that's, that's a significant move. Uh, the main difference is that um, we are right now at 150 watts per channel, not 200 anymore. The reason is the, really the power integration. We had to, uh, let's say, um, be cautious in, in making sure that we can deliver a sufficient amount of power to all channels. Mm -hmm. An additional, something that is new on this processor is that you have 16 channels, but in case you have a system where you only need to have a setup with 7.4.4, for example, yeah. you can bridge six channels to have three times 500 watts mm -hmm. for your LCR channels, and you have additional 10 channels for your surround and height speakers. So it's really flexible. You can build a 9.4.6 or, if you wish, a 7.4.6, sorry, with mm -hmm. really high power on, on the... And I guess again on the software side you will um, be able again to use all the amplification channels as needed. For example, yeah. have um, digital crossover yes. for two-way speakers. You can yes. say um, front left, front left, front right, front right. So whatever you want to do with these guys, you can do on the software side. Definitely. And on the hardware side, you can bridge these ones or do some V amplification configuration. Ex exactly, and you can actually also say that if you have your own let's say, higher power amplification for the mm -hmm. LCR. You can use the XLR to drive your LCR and use the rest for the other speakers. It's really flexible. It keeps the same mm -hmm. flexibility and scalability as the ISP range. It is really an MK3 processor with an amplifier. So that's So that's there's really no the um, decline in processing capabilities or not quality compared to an MK3? No, it's, but it, it has all the capability. It's the not only upgradable thing, aside from HDMI. Exactly. Okay. It's not, yeah, exactly. You cannot upgrade the HDMI. It remains something that we upgrade okay. depending on the technology. Uh, the only thing that, uh, let's say, we have with the ISR Fusion in a similar way as the Core 16 is that some of the features will be, uh, let's say, offered with an optional package, mm -hmm. software package that you can buy or not, such as the Storm XT and, and, and um, some other features like the matrix function okay, will so be optional, okay. will not be part of the uh, default product. So this but will this be similar software. to Core 16. Exactly. Okay. Um, I guess you already considered to put in more XLR outputs, but you obviously did not. What were the reasons for that? Well, the, the thing is, with an integrated product, most of the time you want to go to really to the to focus on on, on, on basic installations. Let's mm -hmm. make it this way. We offer already a lot of flexibility with being able to use the outputs the way you want. Um, since this is a 20-channel processor only, right? Mm -hmm. There is actually no need to have extra extra outputs. Okay. Nice. So basically, let's talk about the other products you have in mind. Yes, so that's the ISR Fusion. Yeah. This is our integrated receiver, but we have something also very interesting okay. coming soon. Ja, also hier sieht man nochmal von vorne nicht von einer ähm, zu unterscheiden von einer MK, MK3. Okay, so let's move this way around. So basically this looks like a, an updated Core 16, <laughs> slightly modificated. And, yes. um, but this is something quite different, different. in terms of so the output. From the front panel, indeed, it looks like a Core 16. We are harmonizing a little bit the front panel with the rest of the range. Yeah. So like you can see here on, 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 the, on the core. But something very interesting with this product is that... It's this one. This is an evolution of our MK3 platform to a digital-only product. This is where the name is from. <laughs> it is called Evo, exactly. Okay. Yeah. The ISP main Evo. idea is we have more and more installations where actually the integrator do not need analog outputs. Mm -hmm. So we had several times a requirement to not take a product with outputs that they would not need. So that's one good reason for removing them. And also, we have a lot of, uh, uh, let's say, projects now in the uh, studio mixing capabilities, you know, production, post-production, for mixing multi-channel content and they need products to monitor their, their feedback. And in that case, 
they only need digital input and output. Mm -hmm. Again, no need of analog. So this is a new product that is really targeting this kind, this kind of project. It is an MK3 platform. It will be declined into four models, an AES EBU, in and out, mm -hmm. optional, so you, you just select what you want, 20 channel or 32 channels. And then we also have the AES67, so audio over IP version, also for 20 and 32 channels. Mm -hmm. So you have four declinations of this product. Okay, that's good to know. What about the pricing of these two ones, approximately? We, we are working on it right now. So it's, it's difficult to give you a, a firm price. Uh, the main reason is that we, we keep working with the uh, component supply chain. Mm. And, and you know the situation it's these days. It's, these it's days. really <laughs> like on an everyday basis, it's changing. So we, we're looking at, at, at balancing the price at the moment. But we, 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 do, we do target to be quite competitive. Mm -hmm. uh, Sorry for the noise. That's is übrigens der Rausschmeißer. So. <laughs> so please leave the building. <laughs> yes, please leave the Everyone building. Everyone is, is ex exactly. ignoring. <laughs> if we talk about the receiver, I mean the target is is to to be uh, uh, basically in the same price as where, where we were with the previous product, the IISP. So in any case, below 20k. Right. So this is supposed to be significantly cheaper than buying even. A Core 16 Plus with a 16 your PA channel. 16 yes. MK3. Of course, yes. So it makes it's, it, it. It is a little bit less powerful, right? But it integrates the exact same thing. Mm -hmm. We we want to be competitive in that segment, so that will be announced in November. But but this is going to be below 20k, that's for sure. Okay. On on this model, it's the same. We we are we are still working on that, but we want to be in the in the 10k range so between mm -hmm. 10 and 13k basically so but in mm -hmm. no more than what the core 16 is okay today. let's get uh, back to the pricing of this one yes what's the reason for being able to lower the price for an included um, amplifier that um, as a single component costs approximately 12 grand mm -hmm. and a processor that has a single price tag of 10 grand What's the reason uh, for okay. being able? Is, is it the, the additional housing or is it logistics? Yes. You, you have a lot of uh, different things, but clearly the, the, the housing, the internal construction, you, for, for some of the parts, you actually pay the price twice mm. uh, by separate okay, companies. So controlling so by by and integrating, stuff. we do more things. But also, with this product, we are, we are changing the, uh, the amplification technology and mm -hmm. the, the way we are, um, let's say, mounting everything on, on, on board. Mm -hmm. we, we, we have a, a, a different complexity that makes us able to really not lower the price, but be more competitive. So the, this platform will not be with Pascal Audio Amplifier anymore. Okay. We, are, we are now moving to the Edge technology from Ice Power. Okay. So it's, it's uh, actually a little bit more efficient. Do you consider this to be a decline of not at sound all. quality? Not at all, because the Edge, the edge uh, technology from Ice Power is actually much better in terms of THD and noise. Okay. It's roughly a 10 dB increase on both parameters, which is significant. Okay. So that, that's really to us, it's more uh, a move to higher quality in terms of rendering. So uh, a mm -hmm. bit lower power because we have 16 channel in, in the cabinet where you also have the processor. Uh, but that was also uh, uh, needed for us to be able to offer the bridge capability. Mm -hmm. you know, so aside from slightly less power, you can assure that this one has the same sound quality as a pre-pro combination? Of course. From your house, okay. On, on the processor side, we, it shares the exact same hardware as we'll find on an MK3 product. Mm -hmm. okay. So the, the, um, let's say the DAX, the DAC board that has been really praised by multiple reviewers that uh, in terms of sonical quality is, is maintained. Okay, well, let's talk about DREC. There yes. are many other manufacturers around that offers DREC these days. Yes. And from your um, manufacturer's perspective, what's the reason for a customer to go for Storm Audio when getting the same calibration tool at other manufacturers? Yes. Is it yes. the digital crossover stuff? Is it the processing? You, you do or yeah, there, there, there are multiple reasons to go to go with this the, the first thing is um, if you look at direct live and and the base control uh, still today we we, we have the, the the best integration in terms of filtering capabilities so we have more than 3,000 taps mm -hmm. per channel where the competition is at a thousand roughly so mm -hmm. we are three times more precise in, in the filtering so the quality of the, the target curve and the filter you got sorry you get from the tool when it exports mm -hmm. the ISP is 
is really more precise. Mm -hmm. That's number one. Then also the integration in terms of how many profiles you can do with the rack. We still can do like 10 profiles per room, I mean, per, per theater mm -hmm. that you create. I mean, none other uh, can do that. Okay. Uh, that that's that's one of the key aspect that we believe is is different from from the competition. But also, we we are working closely with with Dirac, and you can be sure that whenever they come with a new technology, we'll be definitely some of the first to have it. I take new technology as a keyword. Would you mind to share some preview on future firmware features that are supposed to come soon? Uh, we, we have several interesting ones. Um, so one of, one of them is um, we had several requests to be able to actually in one room where you have a set of speakers. I be know what's coming. Yeah, to be able to <laughs> use them in a different way. Like uh, we had customers who had the room in one direction for the projection and on the other direction, they have a TV or, or they have their still. Simply speakers. imagine a home theater with separate rows where you want to specify setup profiles for room one usage only and for complete usage. Yes, so that will be possible with a software that we will release early next year. So you can um, include the complete speaker configuration and the channel mapping inside the configuration file and the preset or something similar to that? Um, how to explain that? The idea is that you will be able to, to reconfigure the 32 channels of your processor the way you want. Okay, does this include to do a complete new profile from yes. the scratch? Yes. Okay, so basically that's what we were asking for. Yeah, so you will be able to create multiple presets using completely differently the speaker set. So okay. whether it is to make sub theater, like okay. you want to create, maybe in a showroom case, okay. you want to showcase the 13.1.10, yeah. or you want to showcase a 7.1 using the speakers yeah. completely differently, you will be possible. That will be possible. Sorry okay. to do it. Yeah. And and uh, decoding mapping channel. It will it will follow uh, your new configuration. Okay. That, that's cool. Okay. Anything else uh, in the next? Uh, uh, we we also like have a, a funny feature that was requested. Uh, um, we, we had some customers who are actually doing some karaoke or sometimes some live music in their in their room. Let me guess, they're from Japan. <laughs> actually not. <laughs> they they are in the UK actually. And okay. and they were really looking for a low latency mode. So we, we are coming with a, a yep. way to, to get the latency to be uh, roughly in the ten milliseconds in the in the system. So that requires that we we have to disable some of the uh, post processing. But for the use case, like okay. karaoke or, or live music or party mode, it's fine. Or and gaming, and yeah. that would be also added sure. at that time. That, that, that's and interesting. I, I yeah. just uh, finished a um, MK3 video, which is going to be released soon. And this is, was the only critic I had on the product, that the delays when using Direct and stuff like this, it's, it's not it very is, yeah, fast. It is true, but uh, on, I would say in the normal use case, we, we cannot really go around that. Uh, yeah, Dirac it's, it's the same with other processors exactly. too. I have to admit Dirac that. processing, you know, is is around 20 to 25 milliseconds. Then you add to that the Dolby Atmos decoding it, that is quite lengthy. In would, it, would it be that difficult to just implement more processing power? It's not so simple. Okay. We we uh, it's not so simple. No. Okay. But it. right now it, it is still uh, let's say catching up with the the projector timing. So there is no issue. But it's true with. If you if you want to like play gaming and all that, mm -hmm. uh, it's it's not. I mean, having a Dolby Atmos like Dolby Digital Plus together with gaming okay. is is a challenge. That's that's clear. But okay. this is a challenge to any any receiver at the moment. Okay, let's talk about decoding yes. um, at last. Um, what's the situation with IMAX enhanced certification stuff it's, like that? It's finalized. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. We we announced in this summer actually. This okay. was released in the software. Uh, 4.3 R1, I think we released that. So IMAX is now fully enabled in the product. Yeah. Are you going to add any new DSP features or cross-mixing capabilities, something like that in the scope? Well, we're working on different things, but this is too early to, to mention them. Okay. Uh, um, what, what we will be doing... I will keep asking next yeah, time of course, Barcelona. of course. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure. But um, we, we are doing things, um, and let's say we are adding or improving things for the um, user, like actually uh, some of your system, uh, where you have multi-way speakers, for example, um, um, the the uh, um, the delay 
will now be uh, extremely uh, wi with a much lower step than it was in oh, the past. Oh, we so highly now, appreciate that. Yeah, um, so now we will be in 0 0.001 milliseconds. So you and it's not just for display in the in the GUI. It's also no, no, no. really it's um, in the measurements. Of course. Okay. So, like, if you have to do a, a Twitter alignment, you'll be able to do it very extremely precisely. So that's one of the things we do, and we are also adding a new type of filter, the Bessel filter. By the way, just remember one question. There once was a press release mentioning some kind of a bypass mode. The bypass mode is actually for, for audio. This low latency mode. Uh, okay, okay, but it, it never returned in any <laughs> uh, further uh, press releases anymore after that one. So yeah, it got well, lost some, some time. It's, you know, sometimes we have to prioritize when we, we put the, the features in a software. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe it was delayed at some point, but there are always good reasons for that. But now it is it is in the next coming release for early next year. Mm -hmm. Sure. What's your sense of the market regarding the market share between Dolby and Oro installation? Do you see any difference in, in certain markets? So it's it's mostly Dolby Atmos in, in the United States, or do you see a rising demand for Oro 3 installations in general from your side? Clearly, Dolby Atmos is uh, is dominating. Uh, now, do you see a trend for Oro 3D that they are stable and stable in, in and spe specifically in Asian? It's regions? hard to say. I mean, but there are definitely countries like indeed China. They they, they like very much the uh, Oro layout, as we would say. But this is more. I would say it's not really Oro 3D. That would be the Oromatic. I mean, the up mixer, mm -hmm. the Oromatic up mixer is still for for a quite a good number of people the the preferred up mix. Mm -hmm. and, and, and in that case, I would say, yes, Oro is, is still well seen, well regarded by a lot of customers. But, I mean, in, in the content itself, yeah. uh, I mean, for the decoder, uh, there is no much content. But most people do not build their home theaters according to Oro 3D requirements just no. to use No, well, the, the ratio would be low, but you still yeah. see people doing this. Yeah, yes. yeah, you, uh, you have people who do, who do a layout that would be closer to the Oro 3D versus the Dolby Atmos. It's, it's quite interesting to see how this depends on the countries, <laughs> actually. It is true, yeah. it is true. Yeah. But uh, in in the uh, but clearly still in most of the case the, the the layouts are really Dolby Atmos centric. But you know, uh, if you if you make the, the placement in a way that uh, is well thought, you can be compatible with all these modes. Uh, you know there is you, you might have heard uh, uh, from the CDA that there is a, a group working on kind of optimizing the placement of the speakers to respect. Uh, all the codecs, mm, yeah. and and this work will soon be released, and you will see that you can have actually a, a, a good amount of speaker positioning recommendations that really help to have the three codecs where we produce. So that's this is something that it goes into a kind of uniformization, making sure that uh, it can be well reproduced in in most situations with good recommendations, and it works perfectly for all of us and well, all forward, forward to that. Yeah. Anything else you'd like to mention regarding uh, those two products or No, well, just uh, it's it's going to be released by I mean this one we hope at the end of the year. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, we we're working on the industrialization now. Uh, so let's say first shipment end of December something like that from Christmas and and this one would be in Q1. So uh, it I would say the real official launch with first deliveries by the ISC time. That's that's what we have in mind. Uh, and, and we are really, uh, uh, let's say, impatient to see it going out. Uh, it's an interesting piece, really. Uh, um, yeah, I'm especially excited about this one here. Yeah, I can imagine. And I think um, for consumers, it's still quite hard to find matching amplifiers for, for the consumer market using digital inputs. And you might um, launch some new amplifiers as well to, <laughs> to match yes, this but processor. This is, this is a bit uh, too early to mention it. Sure, but sure, of sure. course, of course, I mean, the trend is, is to go into, uh, let's say, less cable and also to push the uh, digital to analog conversion the, the further pursuit. Well, and from my standpoint as an installer, I, I do understand that sometimes you have a digital amplification where you might want to use this output totally. But what about the subwoofer? Sure, you can also drive a, an amplifier for the subwoofer, which is equipped with digital input, of course, but most subwoofers that are being used in consumer home theaters, they yeah. have a regular XLR input, and it will be quite hard to implement those ones when you don't have one single 
analog output for sub -tools. It's a good point, but you see here, those are optional slots. So it's not it's not totally frozen. So there may meaning, be some meaning, additional uh, analog as, ports. As you know, at Star Module, one thing that is very important is that we, we always listen to our uh, uh, customers, integrators, and all that. Yeah. And it, it, when we see that there is a need for something, we, we think about it and, and we look at that. At the moment, we want this to be fully digital, but there is no obstacle to say we could have maybe four channels or anything like that. That's the future we say, I would say. All right, so yeah. looking forward to that. Yeah. Thank you so much for You're spending welcome. your time with You're us. You're welcome. And looking forward to see you again soon. At the at, at ASE, of course. Um, yeah. What yeah. will be the next ex exhibition? Where will That's you be? Uh, well, we, we might go actually uh, at the CES, but uh, the next big one would be ISC. CES, yeah. 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 I'm considering going there. Yeah, um, for fun. Yeah. Yeah. Las Vegas is always <laughs> worth a trip. And yeah. Yeah, pretty nice. Then if you come, just, just let us know. Well, perhaps we will see you again <laughs> in Nevada. <Right. laughs> Good. Yeah, well. Alrighty. Thank you, Lars. Yo, absolutely. Thanks. Good.